as a better, I love this because when we're having a futures conversation, we can talk about path and it's legitimate. Like we know the path for these teams that are, that are not playing until this weekend. We can kind of figure that, okay, I have a strong opinion here. Not sure there. We can kind of figure things out. So if we look at the four teams that are going to be sitting around and waiting and just watching who their opponent's going to be, I think we can poke holes in almost all of them. And Atlanta is the one that's really difficult. Yes, mm -hmm. you're a little concerned if you're a Braves fan about the Morton and Freed stuff. You are. But guess what? You still got Strider, you still got Elder, and you still have the best hitting lineup in baseball. And that's why the number is where it is. Like Dodgers, we talked about the rotation. Baltimore, I haven't mentioned them. God, no Batista. He he's such a that difference stinks. maker. And we know how important the bullpen is. And the toughest three outs in the game at the very end there. They had Flaherty. It's like they didn't bring what they thought, what he thought. Uh they were getting for a couple of months and all these, all these players in this new situation, how are they going to perform? Like there are reasons to go against that Houston. Like they have the experience. They have the talent. The thing is the pitching just didn't meet expectations in the second half. So that's kind of surprising to me, like rotation wise, bullpen wise, they're in the bottom 10, with, but maybe, maybe they are that team. Maybe they're, they're filled with those veterans that, that are going to be able to turn it on, uh, once the lights are the brightest here in playoff time. So I get it with Atlanta because I, I do think these other buy teams are beatable. And that's, I think that comes into the futures conversation as we're figuring out pass. When it comes to looking at World Series futures and placing those bets, like when do you think is the best time? Because I think the, haven't the Braves been like four to one for a while and now they're only just down to what, like plus 310? Like basically, my point is, is it okay to wait? Is it okay to wait? It I, I think when it comes to this one in particular, I don't know if I have like general advice, but mm -hmm. I think the Phillies are just such a wild card, no pun intended, that because of what they did last year and the fact that, you know, they were, you know, the Braves are, were such a juggernaut and got off to such a hot start that I do think that the Phillies are, you know, a lot more believed and there's a lot more faith in them this go round. you know, starting pitching, hitting all of that stuff. The, the Phillies mm -hmm. aren't going to sneak up on us this year than, than say they did last season. So I do wonder when it comes to if you like the Braves or you like the Dodgers, do you wait until, say, the Phillies win their wildcard series and maybe you mm. can get a better number on those favorites? If, say, however, the Phillies do struggle in this first round series, is that going to matter? Because maybe the Phillies are a little bit more vulnerable. That might be the one path, Joe, that makes sense to me. I'm not betting anybody before the playoffs start at plus 250 or plus 300 to win the World Series. That's not happening. Like okay. Some people don't mind doing that. They have the strong opinion that the Braves are going to win the World Series, and they haven't done it all year for some reason, and, and now they've, they want to have some action, and they're going to do that. I'm not doing that. I think a, a good way to answer Aaron's question is, can the Braves go down 0-2 to the Phillies? Yes, they can. Yes, they can. It would be tough. It would be a surprise. But because of the pitching they have, so like, uh, would everybody be ready to go again? So that first game would be Saturday mm -hmm. for for the Phillies. So I you believe would Tuesday, so. Saturday. Um, mm -hmm. Could you go down early? Like that's that's it. I, I think my I guess my recommendation would be if you like a team, but you don't like the number, just wait, just wait. We're going to have some teams that win okay. series that go down 01, 02, especially when you're talking about best of seven. There's so much baseball left at that point. And you like the depth of the rotation, something like that. And, you know, Philly's so strong at the start. Like, yeah, they could go down or, you know, go down two one, something like that. And then you could start, you will definitely get a better number. I mean, honestly, <laughs> 250 that's a joke <laughs> Yo, in baseball it's still baseball it's still baseball yeah. both ball clubs have had some departures and absences and injuries and you know they've had both of those all of those things both of them 
but one has sustained mm-hmm. them far better than the others. And that's why the Rays are, you know, sizable favorites to win this series, just because they've handled their business a good bit better. And you like the supplements a good bit more than say what the Rangers have to offer. The big thing to me when it comes to analyzing this series, and this is also a bigger picture thing that I definitely implore everyone to look at a lot before making their wagers, and that is what does relief pitching look like? Because I would make the argument, and whenever I've done this study, it's mattered, relief pitching matters more in the postseason than it does in the regular season because fewer games, pitchers duels, all that good stuff. So Mm -hmm. how are your relievers handling things? And the Rangers, not only do they have the worst relief pitching numbers among all of these postseason contenders, it's one of the worst in baseball. There was a time when you could not bet on Rangers full game anything for much of the second half of the season because closer, big problem. Relievers, middle relievers, big, big problem for the Rangers. They're just so thin there that I don't know how they're able to sustain things. And they're going to be asking guys who we don't necessarily trust as starters to begin with, as in Jordan Montgomery, to go 6-7 strong. And I'm just not sure if they're capable in that, especially in a postseason game where the leashes are much, much shorter for starters. So I look at this and say there is value for the Rays to win this series in two games. I expect this to be a very balanced series, and I'm someone who's liked Toronto for years. I've fallen in love with that offense, and they have strong pitching at the very top. You know, Bassett, Barrios, Gaussman, um, the bullpen pretty pretty good too. But I feel like Minnesota is getting overlooked. Like if you look at what they did in the second half of the year, offensively, they're third in baseball in weighted runs created plus. They're third in ISO. If you look at the XFIP and starting pitching in the second half, they're fourth. Like, is Bassett, Barrios, Gausman potentially better, clearly better than Lopez, Sonny Gray, Joe Ryan? I don't, I don't know about that one. I, I think Minnesota is getting completely overlooked, and there's just an assumption they're in a trash division. They won it a while ago, and you, you wanted to pick on the three seed in the American League that people are thinking that they don't have a much of a shot to do anything here. And, and I think based on their performance that we saw in the second half of the year, I, we can disagree with that. This specific matchup, it's weak offenses, and it's great defenses. And the big difference, obviously, is the Brewers pitching. Like what they can throw at you in the wild card is Burns, Woodruff, Peralta, right? And and I actually think they're set up for some success if they move on from Arizona in the next series. If they were to win this and then face the Dodgers, I think they're in a really good spot the way the schedule shakes out. We'll, we'll talk about that coming up. But, yeah, I mean, look, how the Diamondbacks got here. It's impressive what they've done with this young roster. But when I look at their hitting in the second half of the season, I'm like, ee It's all near the bottom, man. The way to run created plus are 25th in baseball. ISO, they're 27th. Uh, they, they win with, we mentioned the defense, but also their base running. That's, that's how they win mm-hmm. games. Now, Galen, top of the rotation, that's impressive. They got two guys you can lean on a little bit. So so maybe they can make their way through a wild card round, but if they were to advance, I have no confidence that they would be able to win a best of seven. Uh, but as far as this series goes, I think the series price is about right over at BetMGM. Uh, we have the Brewers as minus 160 favorites and D-backs plus 135. I like the favorite series spread. I. I'd consider the minus one and a half with the strength of that pitching that the Brewers do have. So like, where's the, where's the Arizona advantage? Like everything they do well, for the most part, the Brewers do well too. And they just, there's this huge gap when it comes to the starting pitching. So I I think it's going to be a short, short stay for the D-backs. I do think that the Diamondbacks lose today, but as soon as the minute that that game ends, I'm betting, betting the Diamondbacks out. to win the World Series because Freddie Peralta is fine. I don't think he's better than Zach Gallen. And then what are the Brewers throwing out their game three? Adrian Hauser, know. Colin Rea. Like, I think Merrill Kelly's much better than both of those guys. And for me, part of it, too, is, yeah, the Diamondbacks offense wasn't as good down the stretch. But at the end of the day, like, they still have Corbin Carroll. 
They still have Christian Walker. I really like Lourdes Gurriel Jr. Like, I still think Arizona has the better lineup. Great, Christian Yelich had a bounce back season. Okay, cool, feel good story. I still think that the (laughs) Brewers don't have that star. Like, they don't have the dude. And Arizona does in Corbin Carroll. And then once you, if you get to that game three, I think that Arizona really has a chance. So I, I don't get me wrong. I think they lose today. Fought's my guy. He pitched well down the stretch, but Burns is that much better. I think the Diamondbacks lose today, yeah. but I'm going to bet them to win the World Series right after that. Bad news, Jake. I literally have written down. Wait to bet AZ Series plus 126 right now. So all right, you guys are toast. Oh, um, but he's gone. He's gone. You guys are toast. Bye, Jake. Come on.